Okay, I think we're going to get cracking. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here this afternoon. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, just to let you know how we're going to proceed today, uh, we're going to be uh, seeing presentations from all of the four recipients of the uh, award this year. And uh, we're uh, privileged to have on the panel um, today for a Q&A at the end of the, the presentations, the uh, Senior Vice President of Image Management from Turner Broadcasting Systems, uh, our very good friend, and uh, Barbara Griffin. So Barbara, thank you for coming. <laughs> we have Sebastian Liste, and we have Paolo Marchetti. So first of all, we're going to run through the presentations. Um, two of our recipients aren't here this year, so I'll just be giving a, a brief overview of their projects, their winning projects. And then, as I say, at the end of the presentations, there'll be a Q&A, and it'd be great to, to have you involved in that. So again, thank you for coming, and just a, a little bit about the, uh, the scholarships themselves. Um, each year, we, uh, we present um, an award of $100,000 uh, to five photographers, who obviously each receive $20,000 each, um, which helps them um, create and uh, complete these uh, important projects that uh, quite frankly, without this grant, uh, probably wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be seen. So we're, all of us at Getty Images very, very proud that we're able to do this. Uh, it's, it's become very important in the industry. And uh, so far during this program, we've now donated over $800,000. So uh, we're delighted to be able to do so. So this year, slight change, one of the five um, awards has actually been uh, presented to Andrea Bruce um, in partnership with the Chris Hondros Fund. And we set this up in memory of our friend and colleague Chris Hondros, who uh, died in Libya last year. Um, to give you some idea of, of, of what the grant means, um, I was just going to read you a quote that um, Barbara passed on to me uh, a couple of weeks ago about the experience. And she says, uh, so often, photojournalists work in the most difficult of places, in situations that are incredibly, unimaginably challenging to most of us, and yet they continue to do what it takes to tell the story. It's wonderful that Getty Images continues to support, encourage, and inspire their work by giving these grants each year. And as I say, we're very proud to be able to do so. So we're going to move on to the presentations from the four photographers this year. And the first uh, recipient is uh, Bharat Chowdhury, who uh, cannot be with us today, but he sent me some notes that he asked if I'd read out. And uh, Bharat is a freelance documentary photographer from India, now based in London. And after receiving a degree in forestry management, he spent five years working with CARE, an international NGO on issues of rural poverty and education. And life took a big turn one day when his father gave him two cameras as a gift, an old Pentax and a Minolta. And from that moment on, he knew photography was what he wanted to do for the rest of his life. His photography was later shaped and developed through the mentorship of Magnum Photos photographer Raghu Rai in New Delhi. His winning project is The Silence of Others which aims to document the experience of young Muslims and through this reveal how social, political and economic factors are fueling the alienation of Muslim youth in France. For over two years, Barat has documented the impact of religious prejudice and stereotyping on young Muslims in America and England.
Our next uh, recipient, um, Sebastian, is a photographer and a sociologist working in many aspects of contemporary life in Latin America and in the Mediterranean regions where he grew up and knows very well. Sebastian won the Ian Parry Scholarship for his long-term project, Urban Colombo, about the extreme living conditions of families that set up home in an abandoned chocolate uh, factory in Salvador de Bahia in Brazil. And this year, he's been awarded the prestigious Remy Oshlik Award, uh, which will be presented here at Visa. Sebastian has also joined the core group of uh, photographers at Reportage by Gain Images. So here to talk about his work, please welcome Sebastian Lister. Well, this is a, a continuation about my, my exploration of the Brazil, Brazilian society. I have been working for the last three years in, in Brazil, mostly in the, in the urban, in the, in the cities, in the major you know, cities from Brazil, like Salvador de Bahia, Rio de Janeiro. And after two years working in my first project, the, the Urban Quilombo, about this community in Salvador de Bahia, I realized that I have to go you know, to the real you know, root of the problem. And after, you know, I spent a lot of time with the families and exploring, investigating, doing research and this stuff, I realized that the real problem uh, about the cities that's happening in the cities, this overpopulation of the cities and these social inequalities is becoming problem is becoming from from the countryside so this this is what I am you know doing the next the new project is called the Brazilian Far West are investigating the roots of the of this problem in the in the city so I in yes I, I, I come to the you know doing a lot of research I, I, I realized that this the Amazon forest one of the biggest problems you know in in in, in Brazil it's not just because they are deforesting the the the, pro, the, the, the rainforest as we all of here now, you know. It's, it's also because, uh, you know, Brazil is a huge country with a huge, you know, a lot of resources. It's really a rich country to live, you know, in the countryside. You can make a really good living there, you know. Also, if you, you don't have too many resources, you don't have too much money to survive. You have a really, really rich land, you know. But the problem is was when at the end of the slavery system more than hundred years ago, um, the government was you know a little bit you know um, it's as difficult as it was a little bit more aware of these all free people now they they want to have uh, their own land you know so they keep you know the, all the land from Brazil in very very few hands. And, and this was the problem. Today it's like more than five million families without land, fi fighting for their land in Brazil, in the countryside. So, and how they, they are fighting for years, fighting and fighting, you know, with the government, with the landowners. And it's becoming a real, real, you know, problem. Don't have this land for the people. So, in the, in, during the, the, the government, the dictatorship government in the 70s in Brazil, uh, it was a little bit crazy <laughs> project, uh, called it the Trans-Amazonian Highway. It's supposed to cross all the Amazon in two to all of the colonization of the Amazon, not just the deforestation, not just the, the resources. It's also, you know, to have, you know, this land and on all the land that people have, you know, don't have the land in, in Brazil, to, to give them, you know, a piece of land, you know, and okay. We don't have more land in Brazil, you know, because it's every single piece of land, you know, is they have their own owner. Okay, so we open the Amazon in two, and they all of the colonization, all of these, you know, workers and families, and they say, okay, it was crazy, you know, uh, this this project, and a lot of people died, you know, because the malaria and all these, you know, things. But but at the end, you know, when when they finished the rock. They say, okay, now you can come back to the, your lands, you know. So when the workers go back, they, they realize that the landowners who own all Brazil have also the Amazon lands. So they have no lands. They were in the middle of the Amazon with no lands, with nothing to do there. 
So they keep, you know, they, they, they do two things. So they keep there in the Amazon and start to work from the landowners or they go to the cities, these favelas. They build all these favelas thanks to the problems they have in, in the Amazon forest. So I focus now in, in, in this region because Brazil is becoming, you know, an agricultural super, you know, potency. It's like a superpower, you know, it's, it's growing up a lot. It's, the economy is becoming one of the most important, you know, in Latin America and in the world in the next years. And all the attention is going there, you know. So I realized that also, you know, why because why is Brazil becoming this superpower? Is because they are, you know, transforming the Amazon into a farm, into you know, into a farm from for the rest of the world. So they are cutting off all the the rainforest and they putting cows everywhere you see in the Amazon. You didn't see the trees, you know, this rainforest that you you have in your mind. You see everywhere cows, cows. It's a lot of land for cows, but it's not land for people. So this is why it's strange. So and 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 also when who the people you know who who don't live to the cities who keep you know in their own line in the in the Amazon they don't have job they don't have anything to do so they go to the big you know fazendas call it fazendas it's like a big big farms like a maybe sited like a you know like a Belgium of, of big you know the, the the size of the land. So they, they need, you know, they need people to work, you know, with the cows. We need people to, to, go, to cut the, the forest. And yes, and, and they started a new form of modern slavery. And it's, it was almost, you know, the Brazil is never stopped to have a slavery, you know. And, and, and this is one of the most important part of the project, is knowing why, you know, the people live to, to the cities and, and build this you know, these communities in, in, in the major cities from Brazil and, and also investigating what is going on, you know, with the real thing, you know, about the Brazil, why become, Brazil is becoming an agricultural, agricultural superpower is really based in slavery work, you know. So that is my work about. Thank you.
next recipient is Paolo Marchetti. And Paolo is a freelance photojournalist based in Rome and began his photographic studies with particular attention to political and anthropological issues. He has produced stories far from home, working on projects in Brazil, Central America, Cuba, Eastern Europe, India, the United States, amongst others. Uh, he's won several awards, including International Photography Award, the Grand Prix de Paris, PDN's Award, 2012, and the last Sony Photography Award. So here to talk about his project, please welcome Paolo. Good evening, and thank you so much for attending this presentation. Um, Fever. Fever is my a project that was born uh, in 2009. I, I decided to to tell the rage, and the rage is the, the core of my research. And when I, when I began this project, I, I didn't image the, the chance to tell a story who, who, who is coming so, um, so attinent with the times that we are uh, facing. During the, the first months, I, I, was, um, I was thinking only about um, a, a group of persons uh, and, and, and this uh, primordial feeling, the rage. But going ahead in, in during the last four years, I, I started to understand the, the chance to, to tell something more. This is a phenomenon that is quickly growing uh, in the, between young people between the younger. And it, it, wasn't, it wasn't being uh, easy to build a relationship with them. Um, I, I started to meet them without my camera for um, more or less two months. To let them to know me, to understand my intentions, to smell me, to test my my target, my my personality, and um, I accept this condition. This was the key that um, allowed me to go in, go inside, inside the flock. Um, I I learned a lot taking. Uh, realizing this project, I, I, I learned the, the distance, the human, the mental distance with the, and the photographic also, the photographic as well. Um, it, 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 it is a huge lesson um, about um, an anthropologic factor that we need to, to mind and also a technical lesson, the, the right distance. Maybe sometimes you are too much close, maybe, uh, maybe sometimes the distance is, uh, is too much. Um, Fever represents the first chapter that, uh, about my research, about my research on the rage of anger. And um, during the last two years I'm, I'm studying other channel where, where the rage can express itself. The artistic channel, um, the agonistic channel. And it's not a, a, a simple research, it's something like based on the trust between me and the people who, who let me uh, live um, with them. Fever is the political channel. But the core of my research is uh, a feeling, an anthropologic factor, the rage. That's enough.
Thank you, Paolo. And um, the fourth recipient this year was Kusuke Okohara, who uh, sadly can't be with us today. Uh, Kusuke grew up in Tokyo. He has photographed lepers in China and Nepal, assassins and young drug dealers in Colombia, self-harmers in his native Japan, and most recently, the nuclear uh, disaster in Fukushima, which is his ongoing project. He continues shooting the stories that he says touch him, including this award-winning project titled Fragments Fukushima. Kusuke has two goals for this project. The first, to try and identify what the disaster truly means to the world through imagery and audio interviews. And the second is to collect the fragments of Fukushima for future generations. <laughs> 